You need to stay put and not move because if you move, you'll knock the camera over. We're we ready. Let's go. and this is running so and so and I'm trying something different again today with my lighting and I'm trying to I'm sat down in a different corner of my sewing space just to see how this particular vlog goes with the lighting situation I do have a new ring light I just haven't got it out the box yet and first of all before I start on today's vlog I just want to say thank you again for all the beautiful messages that I've had um, wishing me all the best and wishing me a get well soon really do appreciate it thank you so very much indeed now lots of you know i've just had a, a rather long time off work with a chest infection and i jokingly said i think it's time we have the chest infection fabric haul so here i am <laughs> i'm a woman of my word if i say i shall do a vlog on the chest infection fabric haul then that is exactly what i'll do now i have been kept busy over the time I've been off work doing my Duolingo French and watching everybody on Instagram <laughs> and believe me seeing an Instagram story is a brilliant way of cheering you up uh, and uh, I was very good and I did not succumb to any of the fabric offers that I saw on some of the reels but when I the day I went off sick I was expecting a delivery from first the fabrics and it's finally here the school secretary had it stored in a safe corner of the office and what I you can hear all this rumbling I'm so sorry I love a delivery from first for fabrics basically because they wrap it up so beautifully and what I've ordered was one of their butterfly fabric bundles and I shall come to what I'm going to make with this in a minute I bought a pattern as well so it's just a fabric haul it's a pattern shop as well I bought the True Bias Marlowe cardigan now I put a picture of the Marlowe jumper up and I'd love your comments do I have pattern sleeves or plain sleeves do I have a patterned body or do I have a plain body I really love the combinations that they've put together here I think the lady behind this at First of Fabrics was our friend Tamlin. Brilliant choices, Tamlin. Absolutely love it. Thank you very much, First of Fabrics, for that one. And again, the Marlowe sweater, which I will put up there. Now, when I was buying the Marlowe sweater, I'd, I'd wanted that pattern for a while, and the company that I bought it from had just said they'd got it online. But on that same day, I watched a vlog by a lady called Ruan. You might know her as the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and she was... Um, she was talking about the pros and cons of double gauze, which, and I have bought some here. Now I've bought this double gauze to use for the So Yellow for Endo Challenge, which is being run by Jess, who is, what is Jess? So much more. And Ruan did the most beautiful vlog telling us about the, quanti the qualities of double gauze, and it does drape now. What am I going to make with it? Now, this is the big question. One of the choices is the Anthea, Anna Allen Anthea blouse. And I'll pop a picture in there. I've seen a lot of these online and I particularly liked, Rachel's made one, um, which I've not seen yet because life is just as such. I've been down to see Rachel for a while. She called in to see me last week, which was amazing with Martin and Bronte was so lovely and she bought Piper too um, but life is just so busy we've all got so many commitments you just can't get to see people the way we way we we have done and it's just just life evolving so this one came from Jess at so much more and she said she sent me her get well messages as well do you know I think having had this week off I've just lost the plot on everything I just hope this comes out well so that came from so much more but also, um, Stitch Re Repeat, which is Helen, 
posted that she'd had fabric from a different company. Now, I haven't actually opened this yet. So this is a brand new vacuum. Here it is. Now this is a straight cotton poplin, which is the other fabric that's recommended for the Anthea blouse. And again, it's a goldy yellow. Now, a true sort of lemon yellow, it's not me. I need to go for sort of like the, the golds and the orange, into the oranges for my yellows. And this is just a poplin. And I bought some Ethel and Joan buttons as well. Look at those. Beautiful. And it came from, oh, I can't remember the name of the company. I'm going to have to pop it down in the description box below because I can't remember it, but that's their logo. If I can, I'll remember to put the name across the bottom there as, oops, the name across the bottom as well. I think the lighting's working in this far corner. I can see the light on me, which is good. So that's that particular one. Oops. These have all been packed up in their, their thing. cellophanes. Now, I have fallen in love with the Tilly and the Buttons Pearl Jumper. But I struggled to find, there it is, the pearl. I'm sure you, a lot of you have seen pearl. But pearl, I have fallen in love with, and you need a slightly lighter weight fabric for that one. And I have been following a lady on Instagram, and I've seen her shop, and she's called Jenny Stitches. I'll pop her website down below. And she has a nice selection of, of slightly different jerseys and things. And look at this. This is a denim, it's like, it's the cable viscose jersey, but it's incredibly lightweight, so it's very, very fluid. It's got its horizontal stretch, and it's got its vertical stretch. The link to buy this particular one, which shade is denim, will be in my description box below, but it's got a very fine cable on it. Can you see that? And if you look at it here, so fine but I absolutely love it. And I want to, to, to make the pearl to go with the Vogue jumpsuit that I'm making in this particular Lady McElroy fabric, the Prosecco Fizz. And I thought this would match in beautifully as a jumper, a warm layer to wear over the top to my father-in-law's 90th birthday celebrations. So there's another one. I am literally just throwing these onto my sewing table. I might even show you the sewing table at the end of it. I need tea. First day at work, it's dark outside now. Called in to see my friend Melanie on the way home from school because she wanted to know if I survived my first day back. I did. And uh, then I've been out with the dogs. They have been, where are you? Maggie's down here now. I love my dogs dearly, but not when they do that to my gloves. How useless are those gloves now? Absolutely useless. Let's carry on with the job in hand, which is fabric. That'll cheer me up. Who gets these annoying phone calls? They, they're actually call centres that are offshore. I don't have a problem with a call centre offshore, but you know it's not a UK number when they answer it and you wait. And it's like, let's put some money in the meter. Let's wind it up. Oh, it's going to go to the Far East. And what do they want to sell me? Sky. I had somebody who rang up the other day and said, we're an insulation company and we want to check your details. And I said, no, you don't. And I put the phone down. <laughs> so annoying. So, so annoying. Next fabric that came. Now, this was ordered before I became poorly. And it's for my... It's for the um, stitched up sew along for the Atelier Jupe Frida Blouse. What do we think of this one, folks? This is the Atelier Jupe, and I think it's like a peacock. Can you see the peacocks on it? And I absolutely love it. It's totally outside my comfort zone. And especially after the first for fabrics fabric with the kiss with the lips on it, which will be in my next vlog, by the way. That was at my comfort zone. I thought, right, I'm gonna go, go for it again. And it's for the Atelier Jupe blouse. I'll take a picture of this and pop it in. So the Atelier 
Tellier Jupe Frida blouse and it's the stitched up sew along. It's all over Instagram. Just type in at Rach stitched up your Dita, you'll get the link through to Rachel. If not, um, I'll put a link to her YouTube channel um, in my description box. Just click on that and you'll get over to Rachel. And she's also got a Facebook group. If you send a request, we'll sign you up to it. That's that one. Now, some of you will know that in the Stitched Up Facebook group, I said, was being ill an excuse to buy fabric? And they all said yes. And Hannah said, after, a be after my first half week off work, she said, I'm going to take you somewhere. And she took me to Bugweeds. Now, Bugweeds is the lovely little shop little shop it's quite large actually that does sewing courses and it is slightly north of York on an industrial estate called Clifton Moor and if you're wondering what I'm doing when I'm talking to you I've got Maggie down here and she is <laughs> she's giving me the eye because she wants feeding anyhow she took me there because I'd seen that Bugweed who is Rebecca she calls herself Bugweed it's a long story it's going back to what her dad used to call her when she was younger and it, it's a term of endearment and sadly she lost dad a little while ago so the name has stuck and it really has got true meaning to it Hannah took me down to Bugweeds and Rebecca was there with her elder daughter Amelia and they looked after me beautifully they knew that I wasn't too good but she'd got in the Lewis and Irene jubilee fabrics and i really really want to make something for the jubilee and one of the reasons is that you know we've got a monarch on the throne who's been queen for 70 years and that is really an achievement it's it probably never happened again for hundreds and hundreds of years um in 2002 and my husband and i and the children when they were both still quite young what was you know, Tristan was 12 and Hannah was 10. We actually went down to London and watched the procession uh, along the mall. If I can find a picture, I'll pop it in. I don't know whether I will find a picture and I'll be able to pop it in. But if I can, I will. But I'm not making any promises. And we sat there and we watched everybody go by and to see the gold state coach that the Queen uses for the coronation and for special events it was just absolutely stunning it was a real privilege and we were on the mall and the atmosphere was fantastic roll forward 10 years and we get to the diamond jubilee and i'd had a chest no <coughs> time for more tea this is just standard english tea in fact it's yorkshire tea in my miss happy mug i love a happy mug I thought everybody else is drinking tea while they're doing a vlog, so so will I, because I need one. I've got a glass of wine for later. Roll forward 10 years, and we have the Diamond Jubilee. Now, I don't know if anybody can remember, but there was this amazing whoo, riverboat pageant. Can you see there? It's, oh, it, it says Thames Diamond Jubilee pageant, and it was along the river. And the Queen rode down in a boat called Gloriana. Now, Gloriana... Is there? Is it on that side? Gloriana's on my side. Here's Gloriana. It's that one there. That's the Gloriana and that's the one the Queen was in. And it was just absolutely fantastic. All these boats going down the Thames and you could see people in it. The atmosphere was phenomenal. Again, if I can find pictures, I will try and slip some in. Hannah had this like red, white and blue sort of umbrella hat and the people that we stood next to on the banks of the Thames were great people had got royal trivia card quizzes from the supermarket and it was if anyone's going to the coffee shop you know I'm making a coffee run and everybody's hands were going up like here's my fiver for my coffee it was a fantastic um experience and this year I'm not going down to London for anything I don't think there's going to be anything like that this year well I'm sure there will be but I'm not going to go down for it and we were very fortunate in the fact that we were just before Tower Bridge, probably in amongst these trees here. We actually got quite close to Tower Bridge. And this is the only souvenir I have from the Jubilee pageant in 2012. So when I saw that Rebecca had in this Lewis and Irene fabric, I thought, actually, 
I want some. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully be able to tilt the camera down. So there you go, I've got quite a haul. The cost, the bill was quite astronomical. There we go, that's better. So the first thing I bought was the bunting piece. So we actually have two of the bunting pieces. So there's one for me and one for Hannah. So there it is. So what we're going to do is we are going to back the, um, fab, the flags in a pale blue. So there's some there, Union Jacks. Turn it over onto this side. You can see what we've got on this side. We pull it down here. There you go. Oh, I'm doing quite well at this, Judy. You're doing quite well today. So that's the first one that we've got. And then we've got a second one of those pieces. Now, what I'd like to make is a quilt, and I have no idea of the design other than I'm thinking or I've got some ideas, but I want to get the words uh, Platinum Jubilee, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee on it and incorporate the logo somehow. But I want to make it pertinent to my family. So I decided to buy a collection of her fabrics. So the first one I've got is the crowns, which is just red and it has silver crowns on it. And the crowns are, so let me see, this one here, which is also that one there, and this one here is the St. Edward's crown, which is the one that's used to crown the Queen. This is one of her diadems, and this is a diadem that was worn by Queen Victoria an awful lot. Those um, symbols would have been taken from the Crown Jewels in the Tower of London. I also have, I'm surprised we've got red with silver and blue with gold. I don't get it because usually you put silver with blue and gold with red. Then I've got the street party fabric, which I think is utterly delightful. Look at that, afternoon tea, teapots, mugs. We love a Jubilee mug in the UK. Jubilee teapots, Jubilee plates, lots of ERs and crowns. And then I've got the London one. Thought this would be quite nice. If that's the right way around for you. Let me just see if I do it that way around. That's the right way around, right way around for me. So you've got the Grenadier Guards, you've got St Edward's Crown, you've got the Orb and Scepter. And there is, oh, I can't actually play it, a um, piece of music by William Walton called Auburn Scepter. Can you see Maggie? Go away, Maggie. I need to do this first. So here... So we have the, the state carriage, Tower of London, and we've got uh, a beef eater, the Grenadier Guards, and the crown, the coronation crown. And then I've just got Union Jacks. Oh, look, I've got more crowns here. White, gold on white crowns. And this is, yep, the same crowns as before. Now, Rebecca, in her wisdom, she must have known I was going to come up and get some of this. She paired it with the bumbleberries, but the Lewis and Irene bumbleberries. So I have got the matching bumbleberries. It was so easy and my mind was so away with the fairies when I went up there. It was so easy just to buy what I needed because she had everything there. There you are, what a massive quilting fabric haul. I've been thinking a lot about my sewing going forward in the next few months and I'm going to be doing um, my pearl and my jumpsuit. Obviously they've got to be done and there are clothes. I want my Marlowe cardigan. But I have a lot of clothes that I can wear and I've got lots of lovely clothes here that I can make and lots of challenges but I really want to just take some time out probably around Easter to concentrate on getting ready for the Jubilee and I thought I'd take you along with the journey when I start that because I do adore quilting just as much as I enjoy dressmaking I think the beautiful thing about working with a needle and thread is you can use a machine, you can use your hands, you can use your inspiration to do absolutely anything. Whether it's construct, construct something in 3D, which is your piece of clothing, or you can construct something flat like um, a wall hanging. That could even be 3D, couldn't it, if you puff it out and pat it out and everything. But you've got so much scope when you're working with a needle and thread and that's what I like and 
it's so hard to say, do I just want to be a dressmaker? And the answer is no, I'm not. Sewist. I'm not so certain I like the, the term sewist, but I have to say it's growing on me. It really is. Because I think when I looked it up, it said sewist was a term that related to working with fabrics similar to that of artist. And that I adore. I love the idea of us being referred to as artists, so it's so it's to makes us think of us as artists, then that is really where I want to be. So there you go. I've done it again. It's still recording. Sewist, needlewoman, textile worker. The world's our oyster, folks. And it was lovely seeing some of the sewing community saying, we're going to branch out and try a little bit of... Um, cross stitch, try a bit of patchwork and quilting. Just go and check out Liz, the baker that sews. Um, she has just done the most amazing rainbow fish jacket, which I think she used the Friday Patterson Company Ilford jacket as a basis. Absolutely love, love that jacket. It's stunning. So, should I make a red, white and blue jacket? There's a thought. Don't even tempt me. I've got Maggie here again. So I hope you've enjoyed my little chest infection fabric haul. And as you can see, I'm not as breathless as I was. I feel very red because I've come in from the outside and I'm sat next to my radiator. But I have to say, I like this corner of my kitchen. What you can't see up there is my pin board. My big board is just up there. And my bookshelves are just here. My special bookshelves that I put up. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you today and I'll be back with you very, very soon for another vlog and another episode of what I'm doing in my sewing world. See you later. Bye-bye.